talk about election reform in Pennsylvania, I'm going to be soon introducing a four-bill package that I believe will improve transparency in our election system, will also improve accountability and increase voter choice. Um, the first uh, bill of that four-bill package would be allow independents, registered independents, to vote in either the Democratic or the Republican primary. Um, so if you're a registered independent, you could vote in either the Republican or the Democratic primary. You could not vote in both primaries, though, on the same day. This would be similar to other states, and that is you show up to vote on primary day, and you would have to declare whether you're voting in either the Democratic or the Republican primary. For example, you couldn't vote in the Republican primary for U.S. Senate and the Democratic primary for governor, just using that as a hypothetical. A couple reasons why I think this is important. Number one is independence of the fastest growing uh, political registration, not only in Pennsylvania, but nationally, and I believe we need to empower them to have more say in our electoral system. That's number one. Number two, especially for races like judge, uh, district justice, uh, and school board, where you can cross-file in the primary. You take, what, just pull out York City. You could be running for school board. You could win the Democratic and the Republican primary for, for school board, and then, in a sense, you're guaranteed of winning in the November election. Registered independents are then, in a sense, disenfranchised. The same thing for judge. I mean, just go back to 2003, uh, judges Kelly and Bortner. I mean, uh, you know, regardless of, you know, uh, one was a Republican, one was a Democrat, but they both won the Democratic and the Republican primary. So if you were a registered independent in your county, you basically had no say on who your judge was because they won the primary. The November election was basically... Uh, a done deal. So that's bill number one. Bill number two would make it easier for third parties to get on the ballot for the fall. Right now, Pennsylvania, as most of us know from um, especially the 2006 case with the Green Party, when um, you know there was an effort, to, um, the Democrats actually tried to get and were successful in getting the Green Party candidate off the ballot. Same thing happened in the 2004 presidential election. I think, uh, in my opinion, um, we should be increasing competition, not decreasing it. And I think giving more voters choices. Um, and so allowing minor parties the same number of signature requirements as the major parties to get on the ballot for the fall. They would still have to have a party convention. They would still have to nominate a candidate. But right now, if you are a registered Democrat who's running for the state house, I need 300 signatures to get on the ballot. A Green Party candidate, the only way to qualify is if their state party gets, you know, 2% of the previous gubernatorial turnout. That's a very high threshold to get. They should have the same requirements that the major parties have to get on the ballot to, again, increase competition. Because I'm someone that I just don't believe that um, I just don't buy into the system that, you know, well, if somebody gets 51% of the vote instead of 53% because there's a third-party candidate, that lowers their mandate. Bill Clinton was elected president in 1992 with 43% of the vote. He still was president for four years. And the Ross Perot factor, you could argue whether you were a pro-Perot, anti-Perot, but I think it, it helped the system. It helped the debate, it, you know, it, it, and it really put deficit reduction back on the agenda and I think enabled Bill, president to be, Bill Clinton to be a, actually a, a more successful president. Not for Perot, that debate may never have happened. So I think the same thing needs to happen in Pennsylvania by allowing Greens and other third-party candidates easier access to the fall ballot, increase competition, let the voters have their say. Um, the um, third bill um, is the Corporate Accountability Act. Most people are aware of the Citizens United case that allows unlimited corporate spending in political donations. That's a Supreme Court decision from the Citizens United case. It is the law of the land, and unless the Supreme Court were to reverse that decision, I, it is a decision while I have disagreed with, I respect that that is the final say in our judicial system. However, I'm going to be proposing legislation that will work within the confines of Citizens United to make sure that we have more accountability of that corporate spending, which would be very simple. If um, the, the annual donation amount from any corporation is 10000 or above, that corporation must get shareholder approval. So they are corporations. They must get shareholder approval before they can make those donations. Think about it. If you're an investor in, take any company, uh, say Enron, for example, which obviously doesn't exist, but so we'll use one that, you know, is um, one that obviously has some bad connotation, but one that isn't going to draw anyone's, so why is he picking that name out of the other? 
if Enron wanted to make $10,000 in donations to somebody running for governor in just hypothetically Wisconsin, um, they would have to get shareholder approval. Why do you say that's important? Well, think about it. If you're an investor in Enron, that's partly your money. I mean, if I'm an individual making a donation or you, any of you do it, that's your money. But corporation money is not the individual's money. It's not even the board's money. It's the entire shareholder's money. And decisions they make impact shareholders. And, you know, whether you have a 401k or a pension plan or any of that, you invest in these companies that are making donations, you should at least have some say in that because part of that money is your money. So that will be the third. And that works within the confines of the Citizens United case. So we're not saying the corporations can't spend the money. What we're saying is they need shareholder approval before they can spend the money. No different than a family budget. You know, usually you need um, all the adults to agree to you know, where you're going to go on vacation, for example. This would be, in a sense, very similar to that. Um, and then the, uh, the final um, bill of this package is um, dealing with no-bid contracts. That is, anybody that is applying or submitting a bid for a no-bid contract, well, anyone that is seeking a no-bid contract with the state, as part of that effort, they must disclose all contributions to state of Pennsylvania officials. So this is, again, in, in improving disclosure. People are concerned about the pay-to-play culture, that whether it does or does not exist in Pennsylvania state government, obviously have people that have multiple views on the subject. But to get the contract, you have to disclose all donations to state officials. That way there's total transparency. You get to see, it'll be posted online, and the public can then make a decision knowing the information as opposed to having to go to the Department of State and dig through all the records. So those four bills, again, allowing independents to vote in the primary, making it easier for third-party candidates to get on the ballot, that is about increasing competition and voter access. Then we talk about um, corporate accountability, Corporations from the Citizens of the United, they're clearly allowed to do that spending, but to, but they have to get shareholder approval. And the final part is if you're trying to get uh, a no-bid contract with the state, you have to disclose all contributions to state officials to make sure the public has full access to information.